Police officers of Reddit, what was something you saw someone do that made you say wait dot 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 is that illegal? There's a bar behind my house. Sometimes I grab ladder and hop the fence to get there. One time I was hopping back over and got stopped. The cop ran my DL and said, you do you. Once I was drunk at a bar that only had one toilet for men and one for women and the lines were way too long during a football game. So I went outside to pee. I ended up getting a ticket for urinating in public. The next day I look up the code the officer cited me for and it was the equivalent of littering. But you see, in all my glory I actually had the decency to pee into a trash can. So I prepared my defense to show up in court and plead to the judge that I was innocent because you can't litter into a trash can. The officer didn't show up to court so I ended up getting off but I still wonder how hard the judge would have laughed in my face. Winter. MN. 12 AM. I'm at my dad's house for a visit. He gets too teared to drive me home and tells me to take his truck. I take the truck and head down a steep hill of a street. The truck sounds weird but I figure it's the 4WD and the snow, ice I'm driving on. Police lights behind me, I slowly pull over. I get out of large truck as the officer comes over. Excuse me miss, did you know you're plowing Madison Avenue in the middle of the night? Me, so that's what all the noise is? I don't know what's going with this thing. He probably wanted to give me a ticket for stupidity and illegal midnight plowing. Instead, he helped me get the plow up, then followed me home to make sure I was safe. Repeatedly driving around a roundabout, like 25 times in a row. Edit, where I am in Australia, QLD, it is not illegal. Judging by the comments it seems to be illegal in Switzerland and Germany, and some US states. Drunk on an electric scooter. My state doesn't allow underglow on normal vehicles, but encourages extra lighting like that on motorcycles. I was pulled over a few years ago for not coming to a complete stop at a yield sign. I had slowed down, looked both ways and for oncoming traffic and then pulled into the street. There were absolutely no cars on the road. A drunk man, dry humping a tree. I had a cop try to give me a ticket for sleeping in my car on the side of the road in a residential area. I was too tired to continue driving home after a visit with my sis so I took a ramp off the interstate and parked and took a nap to avoid an accident. Literally doing what they recommend to avoid endangering people on the road. I forget the charge but he basically tried to slap me with some fine that particular area gives to homeless people. Homeless people. If they loiter or hang around too long. Took me a full half hour to convince the guy I wasn't homeless, I was leaving to drive the rest of the way home ASAP, and I was doing what I knew to be safe and that the two fire engines and three squad cars they deployed were insanely unnecessary even if I was. Guy just seemed pissed as I was to get a call in a night from whatever rich scardipus couldn't. Handle some guy taking a car nap and minding his own damn business. My friend breaking apart a bundle of bananas and only taking two. I was 20 when I learned that was totally and completely okay to do driving above the posted school zone speed limit when the sign states 20 miles per hour when children are present. Well then what constants present? Children inside the school? Children playing well away from the road in the fenced in yard? Just school hours in general? During after school sports and activities? No idea so unless someone's blatantly reckless and an asshole, I won't stop people for driving over the posted 20. Some family reported their car as stolen. When I asked them to come to the station for the hearing, they just told me it was never stolen, they left it in a car dealer to be sold, the business went wrong and the dealer would not pay them what they wanted or return the car. So they reported it stolen because that way the police will get the car back faster. They were very simple people and I figured a way not to screw them over this. Edit, I forgot to mention all of this was in Brazil, the law may be different in other countries and define such situation as theft. Edit 2. Since this got a reasonable attention and people are asking how it is not theft, I'll reproduce a few of the answers I gave to the comments. A. It was on consignment, thanks you slash we. They verbally agreed to let the car on the dealer, transferred the title to the dealer, and would receive a set amount of money for it once it was sold. The dealer did sell the car, but shortly after went broke and could not fulfill his end of the agreement. They were aware of the situation and, in order to get the car back ASAP, the falsely reported it as stolen, saying it was parked outside their house at night and gone by the morning. When I called them to hear more about it, they told me the truth, saying the report was just a way to get the car back faster. Falsely reporter a crime is a crime in Brazilian law. B. I said simple people but it was a bad choice of words. I meant uneducated people. C. Why is not theft, under Brazilian law? Brazilian law crime has different conducts that are defined as crime. Simplified. It goes like this. Theft, 
taking something from someone while they are not aware. X, stealing a car parked on the street, pickpocketing. Robbery, using violence or serious threatening to compel someone to give you something. X, robbing someone at gunpoint. Unlawful appropriation, giving something to someone under the condition that they will return it after a set amount of time, and then this person simply keeps it for good. X, lend you my car for one week, after that time you won't return to it to me. Scamming, using fraud to convince someone to give you something that he or she does not own you. X, selling somebody the title to real estate on the moon. These are the crimes more closely related to the situation that happened, still, can you see that none of them perfectly fit the conducts? That's the case. They let the car with the dealer, so no stealing or robbery. It was not intended to be returned to them, so no unlawful appropriation. The dealer got the car in good faith, but went broke and couldn't fulfill his part of the deal, so no scamming. That's why I'm saying it was not a criminal matter, it has to be settled in a civil court. The dealer probably declare bankruptcy, I declare bankruptcy. Comma and the family is put in a list of people they own money to. Probably the judge will repossess the car and give it back to them, and whoever bought the car in good faith will also be put in that list. Is pretty complex, some people like employees have priority over other creditors e all that. Long things short, the dealer went broke and couldn't fulfill their verbal agreement, as many others agreements he struck, I assume. Civil court will probably confiscate his assets in order to pay his creditors. Sorry for any misspelled words, not my first language. My dog ran out into the street and into the side of a driving car. Crazy lady, whose son was driving, got out and started threatening to call the cops because our dog dented and scratched her car. After she left my mom called the cops to see if there was anything we could be held accountable for. Cop, was it on your property? Mom, no. Cop, was your dog driving a car? Mom, no. Cop, you are fine. Edit, to be clear. The dent this lady was referring to had white paint marks. The dent was not where our dog hit their car, and we do not paint our dogs. My favorite police incident in my whole life has been the cop that stopped, parked his car at a stop sign to give somebody a parking ticket, because the bumper was maybe one foot past the do not park beyond this point sign, while the rest of the car was good. An old lady of Latin descent, 70s I'm guessing, attempts to go around the illegally parked cop car, and gets into an accident. She flips out on the cop, screaming at him in Spanglish for being so careless. He just put his head down as this old lady berated him for parking like a fucking asshole. Sometimes I miss Baltimore. I had a cop pull me over and threaten to give me a ticket for failure to yield to his vehicle. There was a guy up ahead speeding like crazy. I was passing a line of semis that had no room to merge between them and I didn't realize the car behind me was police as it was unmarked and had no sirens or lights on. He was tailgating me so I did move out of the passing lane as soon as there was a spot. I am fairly certain if he had given me a ticket it wouldn't have stood up given that you don't normally have to move over for emergency vehicles when they don't have their lights on. Edit, to answer all the questions about why he pulled me over instead of pursuing the speeder, the person speeding was going way over the limit and I would guess the officer though he could not safely catch up to the guy at the point then took out his frustration on the person directly in front of him. There were other cars in front of me as well, so it's not like unsafely merging would have helped. Not a police officer. When I was 20, I drove my friend to the liquor store since she didn't have a car at the time. It was being shipped across country since she was moving in a couple days. So, being underage, I stayed in the car. There was a cop sitting in a parking lot across the street. As soon as my friend came back, we pulled out and drove off. Cop followed, and pulled us over. Gives me a ticket, takes the bus. Apparently, you cannot drive with alcohol in a vehicle if you are underage. Even if there is somebody of age in the vehicle. So, in theory, you cannot drive your parents to the grocery store and drive them home if they bought booze. I had never heard of such a thing, and everyone who I have told about this since has also been dumbfounded. I go to my court date. Judge calls my name, I stand at the podium, and they read the charges. After that, the DA just kinda stares blankly. I don't see the problem. There was someone of age in the vehicle. The prosecutor reads the law slash statute slash whatever dot 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 the DA kinda shrugged her shoulders and said okay, I doesn't make sense to me, but it's the law. Not a cop, but I know someone who is on the receiving end of this. I always carry lights when I'm longboarding in the dark, even though I don't have to. It's purely a safety measure. My friend doesn't, and he got pulled over for it once. The cops were literally about to give him a fine, 
and my friend had to explain to them that he wasn't obligated to carry lights since skaters are pedestrians according to my country's traffic law. My mate rode the train in only his boxers after he lost his swimming pants or whatever the fuck you English people call it. A cop was on the same train as us and he just kept looking like he didn't know what the fuck to do because it's not really written in the rules that you cannot ride a train in your boxers if you pay for it. Oh no. You can turn left on a red light from a one-way street to another one-way street in most states, and provinces, for us Canadian boys. You need to stop and yield just like a right turn on a red light. It does seem illegal when you do it though. Had a cop once follow me for about 20 minutes at 3 a.m. because my friend in the passenger seat knocked on the window of the car beside us at a stoplight. We knew the person in the car that's why he did it. Cop finally pulls us over on some random country road way outside town. He couldn't even remember why he stopped us because he had been following us for so long. When I asked him why he followed us for so long rather than just stopping us right away he said man, it's 3 in the morning, that's how long it took me to wake up the dispatch guy to call this in. Eventually he remembered why he stopped us and we just said we knew the guy and he was like oh okay and left. Other time I got pulled over for driving to slow down a hill. On big hills I usually just downshift and let a troll rather than burn out my brakes and the look of shame on the cop's face that he didn't think of that and immediately assumed I was drunk was kind of funny but he was pretty young probably not much older than me so I kind of felt bad for the guy. Having sex with animals. This has always been pretty weird twist. Here hurting animals is considered animal abuse and is illegal. Also filming and selling animal porn is illegal. But act itself is not illegal. I have always wondered how they made such a distinct separation between filming sex with animals being illegal but having sex with animals not being illegal. Not a police officer. New story about a man in Louisiana who rode his horse home drunk. The officer pulled him over to arrest him and he said that the horse knew the way home. The officer couldn't give him a DUI because he was on the horse and only gave him a ticket for public intoxication. Every time I walk down the street and see, smell someone smoking pot. I know it is legal now but my brain still thinks it is illegal for about the first two seconds. Apparently you can run a yellow light. My dad got a ticket once for not slowing down enough at a yellow light. Since we're on the subject, is it technically illegal to make a right hand turn at a red light, immediately you turn, and make a right hand turn again basically bypassing the red light? I'm assuming no, as long as the U turn itself is legal but it feels so cheap and makes me feel so dirty. I told a cop to get off her phone while driving. Turns out cops are legally allowed to use digital devices in performance on their duties while driving in Ontario. They don't get special training either. Had a seaplane land in the harbor taxied up the boat ramp and parked in a parking lot while also paying the meter while they went for lobster rolls. Apparently it's legal. Drunk lady had many DUIs and got her license revoked. Drunk lady owns horses. Drunk lady rides horse to nearest bar. Too far to drive the mower as she put it. Cops were unsure of what to do. I'm not an officer but what makes a stop sign legal is well defined, generally they have to be at least a certain size, a certain height from the ground and within a certain distance of the intersection or other feature, such as a crosswalk or train tracks. Additionally the stop signs in parking lots and on private property usually aren't legal even if they are within the legal bounds of size, height, and distance, and there are many of these near me that can't even be argued in court because they are entirely on private property and do not allow traffic onto public streets. So I've been stopped multiple times and had to remind the officer that the stop sign was nowhere near legal. Only once did it cause an actual argument where he had to call it in and they promptly told him that he shouldn't even be pulling people over for that stuff in a mall parking lot anyway. Not a cop, but once when I was still in high school I ditched school with a bunch of friends and ended up being pulled over for a minor traffic violation. Now, I was a senior and was already 18 years old. Well, a cop is talking with my other friend who is also 18. After a 5 minute talk, the cop turns to me, the only other 18 plus of our group and asked what my understanding of the truant law was. I told him I thought it was that if I am 18 I can't get a ticket for truancy. He smiles a bit and says that's what I thought. And didn't write us tickets.